Good morning, everybody. So my name is Natalie Artsy, and today I'm going to show you how our biomaterials-based approach can help realize the potential of immunotherapy to revolutionize treatment outcomes in brain cancer patients. The understanding of the mechanisms that drive the formation of tumors in many cancer types and the availability of novel and targeted drugs have enabled largely curative outcomes in many cancer patients. This is not the case in glioblastoma patients that present with a very aggressive and invasive type of brain tumor. In fact, 90% of glioblastoma patients will not be alive 24 months following diagnosis. And this is despite a very aggressive treatment regimen of surgery to remove the tumor, chemotherapy, as well as radiation. This is an MRI scan of a patient that presented with brain tumor. A few weeks after diagnosis, he was scheduled for surgery to remove the tumor. And you can appreciate that right after surgery, there are leftover cancer cells that could not have been removed. And three months later, despite chemotherapy and radiation, these cancer cells continue to grow, they locally progress, and then infiltrate into other regions in the brain. It turns out that the vast majority of clinical trials in glioblastoma fail because the therapeutic agent under study cannot penetrate the blood-brain barrier and get into the tumor in sufficient concentration and for enough duration to exert its pharmacological action. Indeed, the blood-brain barrier, a very selective membrane, prevents more than 98% of small molecules from penetrating the brain in order to protect us from invaders such as viruses and bacteria. This means that very important drugs that could have been effective cannot penetrate the brain either, leaving us with very limited treatment options for these patients. And the ones that do penetrate, like the clinically used uh, chemotherapy temozolomide, penetrate in very low concentration, as low as 0.1% of the injected dose. We developed and engineered a new hydrogel system that can be injected or sprayed directly into the uh, brain during surgery following the resection of the tumor. This means that we can now screen and deliver a range of therapeutics that could not have been delivered otherwise because of systemic toxicity when delivered systemically to the uh, bloodstream or the inability to cross the blood-brain barrier. Now we have 100% of the drug right where it's needed, which means we can significantly reduce the dose to further increase the safety of the therapy. And importantly, the drugs can reside in the brain for prolonged uh, duration of time. And we hypothesize that this is important not only for chemotherapy drug, but particularly for immune therapy drugs that seek to generate a long-living and long-lasting therapeutics that will train the immune system to identify cancer cells wherever they are and eliminate them. Our materials are designed to uh, degrade in a predetermined rate of the, over the course of a few weeks, interact chemically with the drugs of interest, and therefore release them uh, over time. So now we could screen for a range of therapeutics, and we started with different uh, prudent chemotherapies and identified doxorubicin, an FDA-approved drug, as one of the most promising uh, drugs to eliminate uh, brain cancer cells. So we wanted to test uh, the ability of this drug when delivered using our technology to eliminate brain tumors in mouse models. And here, here you can see the survival of mice uh, that had orthotopic brain tumor. And you can see that oral temozolomide that's now being used in the clinic does not improve outcomes compared to untreated mice. What was surprising, though, is that the intratumoral delivery of doxorubicin, that is 750 times more potent than temozolomide, did not induce any benefit either. And this is because drugs that are delivered directly to the brain get cleared very rapidly before they can exert their action. But now you can appreciate that when we deliver the drug, the doxorubicin, using our hydrogel that releases this drug over the course of a few weeks, results in curative outcomes in more than 60% of the mice. And when combined with systemic temozolomide, we can cure 80% of the mice. So this was very exciting. 
the question was, what happens uh, to these mice over time? And can they actually uh, re reject tumors upon rechallenge uh, because of the generation of immune memory? Indeed, doxorubicin kills cancer cells via immunogenic cell death that releases its antigens and can potentially train the immune system to identify cancer cells and eliminate them. So we took all these cured mice and re-challenged them with an additional tumor in the other hemisphere in the brain. And strikingly, all of them were able to reject the tumor. Our therapy was able to induce an inside of vaccination and eliminate remaining cancer cells using them to train the immune system to identify and eliminate them. And this really protected the mice from tumor recurrence. Indeed, we found that our therapy induced uh, memory T effector cells, uh, both central and effector memory T cells, in response to doxorubicin release via the hydrogel. We hypothesized that the immune stimulatory effect of the chemotherapy releasing hydrogel can be further augmented by the delivery of a very potent immune adjuvant, sting agonist, or stimulator of interferon gene. The chemotherapy uh, delivered antigens can be presented by dendritic cells that will be activated by the delivery of sting agonists in the form of cyclic dinucleotide or CDNs to present those antigens in the tumor draining lymph node to T cells. The T cells become cytotoxic, they, they migrate to the tumor to eliminate the cancer cells, and their action can be uh, maintained using the delivery of pembrolizumab. However, CDN, small molecule, cannot be delivered on its own. It degrades very rapidly in the bloodstream and has poor uptake into cells. Nanoparticles have been uh, long used for the delivery of nucleic acid. However, the small mo CDN molecule cannot rely only on electrostatic interactions between the negatively charged CDN and positively charged particles that are usually uh, used to deliver nucleic acids. So we came up with a completely new and stable nanostructure for potent delivery of CDN. We used polybeta amino ester chains, or PBAEs, uh, to cross-link the CDN molecule chemically to the nanoparticle, to these polymer chains. We also modified some of the PBA chains with arginine molecules that impart positive charge that can self-assemble with the CDN negative charge to form the particle and enhance the biocompatibility of the particle. To make sure that the CDN molecule can be released inside the cells of interest, we conjugated them to the PBE using a catepsin-sensitive linker. This particle, uh, when inside the cell, will, be, uh, will uh, be cleaved by catepsin enzymes to release the CDN to enable it to perform its action. So here you can see the survival of these mice. And here I show you again the untreated mice, the hydrogel releasing doxorubicin, and now the hydrogel with the CDN nanoparticles that also cured more than 60% of the mice. But we hypothesized that the two drugs together can synergize, and indeed, 90% of the mice are cured when we deliver doxorubicin along with uh, CDN nanoparticles uh, in orthotopic tumors in mice. And we, when we combine it with pembrolizumab, now 100% of the mice are cured. This is really incredible. Even in animal models, we don't see such results with one treatment through the sustained delivery via our hydrogel system. And all these cured mice, upon tumor rechallenge, again, reject the tumor. So we ask, is it only the localized delivery effect that results in these curative outcomes, or does the sustained delivery really required to train the immune system to generate anti-tumor immune memory? So we compared the delivery of doxorubicin with CDN nanoparticles when administered directly into the tumor versus the hydrogel, and you see that absolutely the hydrogel is required uh, for sustained delivery of the molecules to train the adaptive immune system to identify and eliminate the cancer cells. The availability of two drugs and the realization of new uh, biological mechanisms underpinning disease can potentially synergize to provide new treatment outcomes. The missing link is delivery systems that can deliver the drugs right where they're needed and for the duration that they are needed to exert their action. We can now provide that as well. I showed you that our hydrogel system can enable the delivery of multiple drugs in a localized and sustained manner. 
we have a, a also proprietary nanostructures that can help realize the potential of new immune therapy molecules. They can synergize together with existing therapies to eliminate tumors effectively. We've established the safety and efficacy of this therapy in multiple tumor models in mice, GL261, CT2A, as well as PDX models from patients. We now seek to complete advanced preclinical studies using humanized models of uh, glioblastoma and study how our, our approach can synergize with targeted and clinically available therapies such as tumor treating fields and radiation. We're seeking for partnerships to initiate IND enabling studies and to scale up manufacture our materials. As a biomedical engineer, my dream is to bring our inventions to patients. I invite me to join me in this journey and uh, to save more lives than we can today. Thank you.